second grade, welcome back. I am so excited today. We are going to continue our talk about money. If you remember yesterday, we went through all of the coins and the bills that we have and we read about them and learned the history of them and what they're made of and what they look like. So today we're just going to review that a little bit and then we are going to begin practice our counting of money and coins and it will be fun. So I'm excited. In front of you, as you can see, I have each bill that we're going to use laid out in second grade, as well as the coins that we've discussed yesterday. So up here we have the dollar bill, and that is worth $1. And we have the $5 bill worth five, and the $10 bill worth 10, and the $20 bill worth 20. And our coins are at the bottom here. We have a 50 cent piece. We discussed that we don't really see this often when we go to the store, but your mom or dad or grandma or grandpa might have them around the house and they are worth 50 cents. This is the quarter and the quarter is worth 25 cents. And the smallest coin that we have is a dime and the dime is worth 10 cents. This here is a nickel, and nickels are worth five cents, and the penny worth one cent. So yesterday we worked on identifying coins and bills, and today we are going to practice counting them, which is always fun. Now I wanted to show you something about each coin. On the back, it looks a little different. So sometimes when you're counting money, you have to know the front and the back to be able to decide what coin it is. Most of the coins on the front have a face of one of our past presidents or someone special in history. We talked about all of that yesterday. And on the back, they have a different design. So we do need to know what each coin looks like on the front and the back in order to identify them. And the shape and size also helps. Because we rem remember we said the dime is the smallest, but it doesn't have the least value of our coins. The penny has the least value of our coins, even though it's slightly bigger than the dime. So we can't go by size. All right, for purposes of being able to see a little bit better on our screen, I have extra large money for us to play with today. So you can see here our coins. We have a 50 cent piece. We have a quarter. We have a dime. We have a nickel. And we have a penny. And that's what we're going to be using today. We will only be starting off with counting money using a dollar bill today first. That's the first bill that we're going to work with. And here I have a nice, gigantic dollar bill for us to use. So boys and girls, we have a worksheet that we are going to work on together. And you have that with your things at home. So if you pause the video really quick and go ahead and get your worksheet and then meet me on back here, we'll be ready to go. All right, nice job, boys and girls. This is what our worksheet looks like today. We will be counting money in each row. And the first one has a dollar bill, and I see two dimes. The first one is done for us. So what I would like for you to do is I think it's helpful for us in the beginning to label each coin so we know how much they're worth as we're counting. So usually I leave myself a little note at the top and write the value of the coin at the top so I know. And we also talked about dollar signs and decimal points. And that we have to remember when we're writing down our money answers because that way we don't get mixed up 
if we just wrote 120, we might not know that we're discussing and talking about money. So it's important for us to use the dollar sign and the decimal point, which separates our dollars from our cents. So in the first one, we have one dollar and 10, 20 cents. I find it most beneficial if you start with the highest value coin. And on our paper, they have sorted them for us, which is nice because they start with the highest value. Sometimes when we look at our money sheets, we might find that they're mixed up. So that's why it's helpful to label them. So on this next problem, I'm going to go through. I know these are both And we have a nickel and one penny. So I've labeled all my coins and let's use our big money to count together. So we'll look at our paper and we'll get out what we need. We need four dimes, one, two, three, four, a nickel, and a penny. And we'll start with the highest value out of our coins here, which is a dime. Remember, we need to count by tens when we're counting dimes, but then we need to switch our counting when we get to a new coin. So let's practice. 10, 20, 30, 40, 45, 46. So for problem number two, we have 46 cents. And we use our cents sign when we don't have any dollars. You could also use a dollar sign and write zero dollars and 46 cents, whatever your choice is. So we'll come down and we'll look at our next one. We have one dollar and a nickel. How much is a nickel worth? Good job, five cents. So we would say one dollar and five cents. That one was pretty easy. Let's use our dollar sign to write our answer. One dollar, decimal point. Now we don't have anything in our tens, so we hold that place value with a zero and write a five. One dollar and five cents. Let's look down to number four. We have one dollar, and we know this is our penny since it's the only one that has a different color compared to the rest of our coins, and a penny is worth one cent. So let's get our money out. One dollar, and three pennies, and we'll start to count. One dollar, and one, two, three cents. Great job. One dollar, holding our place value spot, and three cents. Good work so far, guys. We're halfway done. The next one I see, I think this one's my favorite coin out of all of them. This is a quarter. It actually tells us on the bottom, quarter dollar. So I know this is 25 cents. I'm going to go ahead and label them just so I keep it straight. I will get out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 
three four quarters. Now, there are different ways to count our quarters. You can count 25s. We would have 25, 50, 75, and then you'd get to 100, which would be $1. You might already know that two quarters is 50 cents, and that two more quarters is $1. Or you might know that four quarters equals a dollar. So we'll go ahead and write our answer, one dollar. We're gonna work on one more together and then I want you to pause the video and do the last two by yourself. Then come back to check your answers. Let's get our money out for this one. One dollar. And 25 cents. So I'll label it here just to make sure. And this also shows me what you know. If you're label labeling your coins, I can tell if you're sure that you know how much they are worth. We have one dollar and 25 cents. So I will write my dollar sign, my decimal point, and my change. One dollar, 25 cents. Okay, boys and girls, let's have you try it on your own. Remember, label each coin first, start with the highest value, remember to change your money thinking when you get to a new coin, and then write your answer on the line. I'll meet you back here in a minute. Have fun. All right, boys and girls, check your answers. See if you have yours labeled the same as I do. 25, 25, 10 cents, 10 cents, 10 cents. You should have gotten an answer of 80 cents. Don't forget to use your cent sign. And the last one was $1.11. $1.11. Give yourselves a great pat on the back for hard work. Tomorrow we are going to continue in class working with our money and Mrs. Lucas Savage is going to be setting up a class store. So you will get to purchase some things using your money once you count them out. Great work today, boys and girls. See you tomorrow.